All right, so today we've got a battery pack off of a Dyson vacuum cleaner. I believe this is the OEM battery pack. I can't remember if, uh, if I have changed this before. Um, all I'm really expecting to find in here is some 18650s. Uh, I'm guessing all the charging, well, the charging port, port the, the charging port is here. Um, so I'm guessing that all the charging is going to be happening uh, inside of there. Um, and all we're getting out of it is just a positive and a negative. So all that the, uh, the computer is seeing is uh, positive and negative out of the battery. Um, so also the shutoff and all that kind of stuff would have to be happening up in the vacuum itself. Uh, I believe this is out of a DC 59, uh, Dyson. Um, yeah, it's got the Dyson name on it. So I'm pretty sure this is an OEM, you know, the original battery pack. Yeah, it says Dyson DC-59 on it, if you can see that. And uh, 21.6 volts, 16.2 uh, amps. That's uh, a lot of amps. A lot of amps. So let me figure out how to get this apart, and we'll have a look inside. Clearly not intended to be user serviceable. All right. I think we are in. All right. So on the charge input, uh, we have this push button, which I'm trying to think where uh, something must push on that when it comes into the charger. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'd have to go look at the charger to figure out exactly what that would be. Uh, these green cells, it's actually a pretty nice little holder for the cells there. I believe that they are, uh, I think the green is Samsung, usually. But I don't completely recall, if I'm honest. So all the brain box uh, is happening, brain boxery, is happening on here. So this is going to be all the charging. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just kind of perplexed at how this is wired. Huh. Okay, well, uh, so all the charging circuitry and everything is going to be on here. I'm guessing this microcontroller uh, is probably specialized for the task. This guy right here. Uh, nice, big, beefy connections that go into the uh, the uh, vacuum. Um, these would probably be the nickel-plated uh, steel. Um, and then all these connections are soldered on. Uh, clearly, this is a custom-made battery cage for this job. All the cells look like they fall in uh, to each, uh, each spot there. Um, I was trying to decide if I want to screw with getting this apart. Um, yeah, I guess I might as well. Rubber tape along the backside for some shock protection. Uh, fairly nicely built, really. So what I'll do is I'll try and get at least one of these cells out of here so we can see what they are. Um, we got four leads coming in here. So we've got a hot and a cold, pretty small leads there. So you wouldn't be able to get a whole lot of charging out of those that small of leads. And then we've got a uh, blue and a brown, which is going up to that micro switch, which uh, when it was pressed, triggered the LEDs, which are somewhere on something. Ah, there it is, okay. So there's the LED, and those are viewed, or were viewed, through two little tiny windows on the sides there. So let me see if I can cut some of those leads without shocking the shit out of myself, and uh, we'll go from there. So these 18650s are no joke. Um, they're incredibly powerful for their size. Uh... I wish there was some way to completely, you know, disconnect them. 
without doing what I'm doing here. Uh, let's see. I mean, these 18650s, one of them, uh, the newer ones are capable of delivering, uh, in some cases, up to like 26 volts or 20, 20 amps. I'm sorry. 26 or 26. Why do I keep on saying 26? They're capable of delivering up to 20 amps of current uh, momentarily, of course, because they, they only can or they only uh, have a capacity of maybe 20, uh, 2,000, 2,500 milliamps at uh, 3.7 volts is typically what they are. Uh, so 18650 cells are completely ubiquitous. They are in absolutely everything. Uh, something clicked. Can't freak me out like that. They're in absolutely everything. I mean, they're in tool batteries, they're in toys, they're in flashlights. Uh, these DeWalt batteries have 18650s in them. These Milwaukee batteries have 18650s in them. They're just everywhere. They've kind of become a standard standard fare in the uh, battery world. So they're, they're just extremely common. Um, and as a consequence of that, they've been getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, so you're seeing a lot of like aftermarket batteries and stuff on the market now. Uh, and most of them are still using reputable manufacturers to, uh, to make the batteries. So they're not, uh, you know, it's really not bad to get those aftermarket batteries. Usually not a bad deal. All right. Got one lead off. So in this case, we've got, uh, I think they said... 21 volts so that's going to be their uh 18650s are usually 3.7 nominal uh 4 volts 4.2 volts is um is usually fully charged 4.2 4.3 usually the low end is two and a half to three volts uh for maximum discharge and as long as you stay within those ranges you know if you're ever using these for a project or something you're going to be fine uh, if you get outside of that, then they can go thermal nuclear, thermonuclear on you. Uh, so don't go outside of those. All right. So we've got one out. Completely unlabeled. Oh, there we go. Uh, SE. I think these are the Samsung cells. I'll look them up and I'll put the specs on there. But yeah, very likely, I mean, these things are rated to, uh, well, a surprising amount of, uh, of voltage or a surprising amount of amperage output. All right, so doing some math here, uh, 21.6 gives us uh, 3.6 volts per cell nominal, uh, which is, yeah, about right. I mean, these are 3.6, 3.7 uh, nominal voltage, uh, typically high, on, high end is 4.2, uh, and then 16.2 amps. Uh, so I think what they're saying with the 16.2 amps is uh, amp hours at that many volts, uh, which would give us uh, 2.7 amps, uh, 2.7 amp hours, so 2,700 milliamp hours uh, per battery, which is about right for these, uh, these Samsung cells. So these extra leads in here are for balancing are for balance charging, which is a uh, voodoo art form that I only sort of understand. Uh, but essentially, you're, uh, you're going to charge, when you're charging these, you're basically going to charge these all at the same voltage, or it's going to balance charge. So it's going to dump voltage into them, and it's going to monitor what the voltage is of each cell, and will uh, basically turn on, shut off, uh, parallel a couple of the cells or all the cells, to make the charges balance because you want all the, the charges to be balanced across. Uh, again, because the voltage is kind of sensitive on this, you've got that uh, 4.2 to 3, 2.5 to 3. If one of these cells is out of balance and you've got all these series up like this, uh, you could end up having one of the cells uh, drop below uh, its nominal voltage. Or if you've got a battery that's not charging, it could... Uh, overcharge the other cells and, and get to a higher voltage. And it's really the high voltage that becomes a problem for these things. Uh, the reason that they let the smoke out and go nuts, um, if you can see, there are vents on the top there. 
And my understanding is these things are designed to kind of internally short out and kind of, if you take one of these apart, there's plenty of videos of that. There's a uh, plastic film uh, with the anode and the electrode on either side of the film. And what happens when these get too hot or get over voltage, that uh, plastic kind of melts in there. And that's what you see when these things start smoking is that plastic is melting and it's kind of slowing the shorting out process of these things. So as long as you're kind of staying within spec uh, for these things, or even if you overcharge them slightly, um, and I, I do mean slightly, and they fail, usually all you get is a big smoke and lights show out of the top. And as long as there's nothing nearby for them to catch on fire, uh, you uh, will really not have any issues. It will just uh, be, like I said, light and smoke show, and it'll be over at some point, and the cell will be fried after that. So what I want to do is I want to get all these cells out of here, and I want to see if any of them are at a lower or higher voltage than they should be um, and see if maybe because usually what happens when these battery packs fail is the ugh, is uh you know one of the cells got out of balance so the um the microcontroller kicks the whole thing offline when that happens to prevent anything bad happening and that's usually the case with laptop batteries and everything. Uh, you'll see there's lots of guys online who actually recover these cells to use them for projects. Um, you know, build electric cars and stuff like that. And this is a very, that is a very viable thing. You can definitely, definitely use these cells for stuff like that. So the other thing you want to be careful about is this black, uh, I guess it's like a piece of rubber is protecting you from the outer housing, which is the ground. So this out, underneath this rubber is the ground. So if you ever get one of these, you're recycling one of these, you're looking at one of these, and this black rubber is torn, uh, figure out a way to kind of safely discharge it and get rid of it. So just like hook an LED or something that's low draw across it and just let it let it drain out and uh, you know get rid of it. Or just take it straight to a recycling place where they know what to do with it, like Best Buy and... A lot of the electronic stores have uh, recycling bins for this kind of stuff, um, but you don't want to screw with it. I mean, it can uh, they can get ugly pretty quick, so I would not recommend screwing around if one of them has clearly got physical damage to it. And what we'll do is we'll just see if any of these are out of balance or uh, has a significantly different charge than the others. Uh, the reason I replaced this battery pack was because um, it just kept kicking offline after just, you know, about two minutes of use, which was annoying. So Four point nine, and finally four point one. Uh, so well, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot because it would be kind of an underload thing that you'd uh, you'd be wanting to test. Um, but more than likely, these two cells, given that they're at a slightly lower voltage, maybe are kind of starting to get a little on the weak side, and uh, were uh, just um, not keeping up when you were vacuuming. And the computer would sense the difference in voltage, you know, whatever the threshold would be, and uh, kick the thing offline as it was, uh, as the voltage dropped out. So that's probably what was going on. Um, laptop batteries are usually designed so that uh, if one of them drops out of voltage, the whole thing just stops working, um, which is why, you know, planned obsolescence, uh, that's, uh, that's part of that, I think. Um, so you have to go get a new laptop battery. At least this thing, when it started sensing stuff, you know, dropping offline, it lets you keep running for a little while until uh, until you could get a new battery pack in there. So that's something, I guess. But anyway, I uh, hope this was interesting to somebody. Uh, thanks for watching.